Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel and my video for rust printing. In this video I'll be sharing a few things I've learned from artist Kathy Johnson who uses this process in her echo prints. I took an online class from her a few years ago and I've really enjoyed using the process. After taking her class I've used the rust printing technique to add warmth to the cool cyanotype blues and cool greens and blues that I frequently use in my own work. To do this process, you're going to need rusty materials or materials that can easily be rusted. And Kathy Johnson has some tips on doing this on her YouTube channel, which I'll share with you at the end of the video. I found those beautiful butterflies at a local garden center. They were already rusty, so it was perfect. I looked at garage sales, thrift stores, flea markets, even your own garage, which is where I found a lot of those other things that you see in the picture. You'll need a 50-50 solution of vinegar and water a paintbrush for applying it, a piece of plexiglass or an old kitchen cutting board to use to support your work, and then a variety of papers. Thinner ones are preferred. Calligraphy papers, rice papers, tea bag papers, tissue papers, all those sorts of very lightweight papers that will allow the liquid to penetrate through the layers of paper to the rusty objects. And then last, you'll need a box of plastic wrap in order to wrap up your project while it's in process. Thin papers do work best for the middle layers. I have found tea bag paper, which I purchase from Amazon, uh, Japanese rice paper, also available from Amazon, various art supply companies, as well as possibly your local craft store. Tissue papers, the same kind you might use for gift wrap, similar papers. You can even do rust printing on cotton or linen or other natural fibers. You can do it on wood. You can do it on almost anything if you're patient enough and are willing to try it. But I like to use paper because it fits well with my mixed media work. You begin by layering your papers on your hard surface, your cutting board in this case. I like to start with a piece of craft paper for the bottom. It provides a nice support, either brown or white. And then I saturate each layer with the 50-50 vinegar and water solution. I usually have a couple layers of thin paper on top of that craft paper. Here you see two layers of thin paper on the top. Then you're going to wet both sides of your rusty objects with the vinegar and water solution. And don't skimp on this because having those rusty objects saturated with the vinegar and water solution makes the process much more effective um, when you place your papers together. You're then going to cover this piece with two to four additional layers of paper. Again, each layer of paper thoroughly saturated with the vinegar and water solution. You don't want puddles, but you do want it thoroughly saturated before you put the, the uh, plastic wrap over the top. Here, they're saturated. Wrap the pile of papers tightly with the plastic wrap. And then you're going to need to be very patient because you'll need to set that package aside for two or three days to allow the rusty rusting process through those papers to take hold. It can be tempting to want to peek, but don't. Put it aside where you won't pay attention to it. You might notice a faint vinegar smell, but it's not going to be intrusive. After two or three days, check for rust by peeking in a corner. And when you have enough rust, remove the plastic wrap, but don't separate the papers just yet. Let the paper dry until it's just slightly damp before you try to separate the layers. That way you will avoid excessive tearing. And even when you do, Peel carefully because they can still stick together a little bit, especially around the rusted objects. You'll notice in this picture here, before I share some rust prints I've used, there's some slight tearing in that one on the right um, where that chain is, where you see that chain. That's okay because you're going to be tearing these, cutting these, shredding these, and doing things with them to create your mixed media work. The first piece I'm going to share with you was the first piece I did with the rusted butterflies. I named it Hope Flies Unrusted Wings because it was actually inspired by another piece I did for a show with a hope theme. This one, however, has a mixed media background. It's just torn and shredded papers, some cyanotype, some other colors. And then I used a little bit of uh, my very favorite metallic watercolors to enhance the colors on the butterfly and a little bit in the background. So it's a fairly simple piece. It's on paper. Uh, it is now matted and framed and I believe it's about 16 by 20 with its frame. 
Rusted Wings Still Fly is a smaller piece. It was a 12 by 12 cyanotype that I wasn't too crazy about, so I used it as a background. It was a fern cyanotype done with some salting, and then I added some stenciled images with um, some acrylic paints, and then I added my butterfly, and again, you'll see the watercolors that I love, the metallic watercolors, and some metallic acrylics that were used to bring out the image of the butterfly. And like the other, the butterfly itself is torn, not cut with scissors. I like the shredded look. Flight Path is a little larger. It's 18 by 24. It's on a canvas. And the background in this one is a combination of cyanotype papers and other papers, some of them rather heavy, that have been adhered to the canvas to create a background. The butterflies were on different papers. Um, the one on the top was on a slightly thicker paper. The one at the very bottom was very thin, but I made them all go together well by using the metallic watercolors to bring out the colors and to connect them to one another. This last one, Resurrection, was just recently completed. Unlike the others, there is no cyanotype work in this one. The background is entirely done with uh, acrylic paints, on a, a cradled wood board, 20 by 20. I used leaves to do leaf prints with the acrylic paints to create the textures in the background. The butterflies were then torn, and the bottom butterfly has a, a deconstructed look, which I felt really brought out that idea of metamorphosis and resurrection as the upper butterfly is more complete and therefore more colorful so that it's flying off all happily intact. The last rusted butterfly is on a piece of paper, and I'm pretty sure it was just some craft paper that was on a bottom layer. The print it didn't come out real well, but it was okay, so I decided to use it as is. And there's a lot of rust in the background, so I just left that as a rusty background. I decided to try putting cyanotype directly on a rust print. What I discovered was that because cyanotype, a different process, requires exposing the chemicals to the sunlight and then rinsing them off after exposure, in the rinsing process, I did lose some of the definition of the rust print. So I put most of that back using a combination of regular watercolor, metallic watercolor, gouache, and probably I'm looking at it again thinking a little bit of ink as well. So this is still a work in process, progress. It does not have a title yet, and I'm not exactly sure where it will end up, but it's one of my experiments. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's a little bit of an introduction. I'm going to suggest that you definitely check out Kathy Johnson's YouTube video or her Instagram page. I'll put a link to that underneath this video, along with a worksheet with some handout idea with a handout with some ideas for places you can go for supplies. If you're interested in learning more about the cyanotype process, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find I have quite a few videos, some for kids, some for adults, showing you the process and different things that you can do with cyanotypes. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video.